Hello people, it's David in Halesleth, uh, Denmark. So um, I know that several of you are praying for me and I'm hoping that several more will be by the end of this video. <laughs> so I um, thought I'd give you a little message on what's happened, what's been happening so far. I've been here nearly two weeks and um, a lot's been going on. Yeah, so I got here on Tuesday the 12th, uh, sorry, Tuesday the 13th of August. Um, before I came out here, God was speaking to me a lot through Joshua chapter 3, which is where the Israelites uh, cross over the Jordan and cross into the Promised Land. Uh, and basically, they, they had to do it by faith. You know, the waters were in flood at the time of year that they crossed. And God said, when the, the feet of the priests touch the water, the waters will roll back and you'll cross over on dry ground. And so they had to cross the water by faith. And that's what I've had to do coming here. Um, it's been a huge step of faith with me and God, God told me that my faith will be tested and it has been and it is still being tested but it's good, it's good, I'm feeling really close to him at present um, so yeah, he spoke to me through Joshua 3 and on the plane there was a little boy sitting across the aisle from me and his name was Joshua and I thought this is really cool, I'm getting to cross the water with Joshua by my side um, then, as we were coming into Copenhagen, as we were descending into the airport, a rainbow appeared for about a second, literally just a second. Uh, it would have been really easy to miss it, but I didn't. God made me see it. So I took that as a good sign. Um, and I spent my first night in Copenhagen. My uh, second day, I travelled here to Hellesliv, which is where I am. Um, I'll be for the next four years, uh, by the grace of God. Um, uh, yeah, I arrived in Hellesliff on the on the Tuesday, and uh, I arrived early. I'd arranged to meet somebody at five o'clock in the bus station. They were going to give me my house key and show me to my house and stuff. And um, I got here about two or three. I had my guitar with me. So I went into the street and I, I started busking and I started singing about Jesus. And um, after about 20 minutes maybe, a lady came up to me and, and in English she said, Praise the Lord. Um, and she told me that she was a member of a house church. And I thought, house church? This sounds quite cool. Um, and she told me a bit about her church and said that there is a brother with me who was also uh, out evangelizing today. She was out like giving out tracts and stuff. And so she went off and I continued playing. And about five minutes later, ten minutes later, her, her, um, her friend come along, his name's Tony. And uh, the house church takes place in his, his, crikey, I can't even get my words out. The house church takes place in his house. He's, uh, I suppose you'd call him the pastor. And, um, and so we all prayed together and uh, he invited me to his his house church on the Sunday. So that was pretty cool. That was a good start. You know, I'd been in Hellesleff less than an hour and I'd met, met members of a house church, which was pretty exciting stuff. Um, and I went to his church last week. I think it was, it was great. Yeah, we had a, sang a bit and sang some worship and... Um, had a, a teaching and then we all had a meal together. It was really nice. Uh, but there, you know, I'm part of my reason for being here is ministry. I really believe that God's got stuff for me to do. But also, I'm here <laughs> to be a student. I'm here to train as a teacher. And um, on my course, there's, uh, I'm part of the international course, and, and we have students from eighteen different nationalities here. Uh, there are, I think there are 35 students on the international course and only four Christians one of whom is my housemate which is quite nice um, so the, the four of us have sort of had some discussions about what we can do together and you know if we can have some sort of a midweek group in the college um, 
and who we can reach out to. And uh, there's one guy, if you would don't mind, I would like you to pray for him. His name is Omar. And uh, Omar, in his own words, rejected Islam when he was 13 because he asked his dad a hard question, um, which was something like, if, <clears throat> if, um, if a baby is stillborn and it goes straight to heaven, you know, without having done anything, why is it that people who aren't stillborn and live get corrupted by the world, start sinning and then spend, uh, possibly spend eternity in hell? And his dad slapped him across the face and says he's not allowed to ask questions like that. And it was at that point that he rejected Islam. And since then, he's been reading all sorts of books about religion and spirituality and he is really seeking truth sorry i'm a bit distracted because three people have just appeared outside the window four <laughs> um so yeah he's uh he's really seeking truth and uh, my hope is that within a short space of time he'll, he'll turn to jesus not just in a religious way but looking for a relationship with the king of kings so please pray for him and please pray for us so we know how to witness well and give us wisdom. Um, <clears throat> I've started my course, I've had my first week of lessons. Uh, I've not started learning Danish yet, that starts on Tuesday, I'm really looking forward to that. But so far I've had psychology, that went well. We've had a, uh, something called education and culture in Denmark, which is really interesting, that went well. The subject that I've struggled with, believe it or not, is English because um, my knowledge of grammar and grammatical terms is pretty much zero. I know a verb noun, an adjective and an adverb and that's about it. Uh, so I really struggled with that. But, um, you know, I keep asking God for wisdom, so he'll help me through. He wouldn't leave me here just to fail. He doesn't do that. You know, he's brought me here to succeed. And, and to make progress uh, and please pray for me in that you know I'm not or I've always thought I'm not super intelligent <laughs> and that I wasn't capable of uh, going to uni but God's got me here and like I say it's not gonna bring me here just so I can fail it's gonna bring me here so I can succeed and so I can make something uh, of my time here you know and that's studying and it's ministry uh, so please pray for that. Please pray that I'll be wise and that, uh, that I'll do well on the course. Also, please pray for our marriage because Alusha is still in Sheffield. And, um, you know, it's not ideal that we're living in separate countries. Praise God for the internet. We can still communicate. But um, it's not the same as being with each other. So please pray that... Uh, that our marriage somehow will thrive in this situation. Not that we'll just survive and just cling on, but that it will thrive and that our relationship will grow deeper and stronger. Uh, we'd really appreciate prayers for that. And also, uh, please pray for provision for us. You know, we're living in two separate homes now, which means double the expense. Um, I need to get 3,600 krona by the end of this week. That is approximately uh, 400 pounds, I think, because I haven't paid any rent yet and I haven't paid a deposit, but the college have been generous and given me a two-week grace period. I'm halfway through that two-week grace period. So please pray that they've got to provide a job for me or a massive lump sum or something. Um, I think he wants me to work. The other day, he got, <laughs> I felt like a right wally, but he got me to walk around town with a sign on my back saying, I need a job 12 hours a week early mornings or evenings. You see, if I work 12 hours, I qualify for state support here in Denmark. So, uh, and that would cover every every cost that I have. So I really need a job, because without a job and without money quickly, um, I won't be able to stay, I'll get chucked out. God has been generous though, and he's, uh, you know, he got me to bring my guitar. And so when I've been busking, I've not only been proclaiming the name of Jesus, but I've been I've been earning a bit of money 
the people here give really generously. There was one day I was out for about an hour and a half or two hours and I made the equivalent of about £45. Right, and if I did that in Sheffield, two hours busking in Sheffield, I'd be lucky to get 15. Um, so they give generously here and then it struck me one day, it's because there's no competition, I'm the only one here. Which is good for me and good for Jesus. Because <laughs> people hear his name. I don't know if they realise it or not, but that's all I sing about. I only sing about him. I don't sing any other songs. Uh, yeah, so please pray for, for Omar, that he'll be saved soon, and all the other students and people in Hellesley. Uh, please pray uh, that I'll have wisdom and intelligence, and that I'll be able to manage my time well. Please pray that our marriage will thrive, and please pray that uh, God will provide everything that we need. And I know he will. I know he will, but please pray. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Lord, I thank you for my friends uh, who are considering me and praying for me and, and supporting me. And um, please bless them, God. Please bless them. Pour your abundant love out on them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, I'm signing off, guys. Ciao for now. See you. Bye bye. God bless. <laughs>